Hello guys, what's going on? Hope you guys will enjoy this one. This is Dark Knights, the metal issue number one explained and it's me Steve and welcome to the Spider Gate tunes. Hope you guys will enjoy this one and first let me tell you if you want to support the video and if you want to support my channel, support my workout, just go to this Patreon and be a Patreon and you will super rock and I will name you or I will give you a shout out so yeah uh, let's go back to Dark Knights the Metal and I'm gonna read this review from vsidecccomics.com and this review is by written by Eric is it Eric Eric have you written this review or who is it yeah Eric show and that is super cool so anyway our issue begins with a cold open on war world where our heroes are forced to fight their way out of Mongols death games which seem to be created by Hiro Okamura the toy master who for some reason is referred to as toy man in this even though that goes against our current continuity speaking of current continuity shit is thrown out in this issue all kinds of willy-nilly like flash referring to Aquaman's harpoon hand which he's never had since the new 52 reboot but all of this is to just get this gang of original new 52 Justice Leaguers together for the rest of the story, even though it's never spelled out where Jessica Cruz or Simon Baz are. Another thing that's never spelled out is what happened to Hero because after the Justice League defeat Mongol, Hero is just absent while our heroes make their way back to Earth. Once our team get back to Earth, then they find that the planet isn't exactly how they left it. Well, mostly just Gotham, which has now sprouted itself challenges mountain right dead in the center of it and once our heroes explore this strange occurrence they discover that there's a secret base inside where they find not only the five members of the challengers of the unknown but also red tornado yeah they're in cry cryopods and tornado seems to be shut down but this is a pretty cool ass find it gets cooler when the blackhawks arrive and we find out that lady Blackhawk is actually Kendra Saunders, the former Hawk Girl, who wants our heroes to accompany her back to Blackhawk's Island, where she plans of giving us the lowdown about what the hell is actually going on here. In the end, we discover that Kendra has made it her mission to eradicate all of the anti metal on the planet since Carter disappeared to go looking for its source. So everything on this comic book is totally amazing and totally enjoyable and that's things and that is what happening in this one also. So which is explained as being in the background of our own multiverse and their only real interaction with it was the challengers disappearing into it and Carter and Kendra hearing their screams from the other side. If that wasn't enough, we also have the prophecy of Barbatos being released from this darkness by a Wayne. So yeah, Batman's going to cause Barbatos releases in the form of his worst nightmares. And what does Batman do? Well, he's still steals Kendra's silver of pure anth metal and hightails it out of there. As our issue closes, we discover that Carter Hell's journal was hidden within Wayne Manor this whole time, proving the Dark Multiverse's existence. And if that wasn't enough, the Dark Knight is met by the Daniel Hall version of Dream, who has never, who has some things you'd like to discuss with our hero. That's it for this first issue of Dark Knight's Metal and while I am all about the big picture of this series and what it will bring, I have to say that a lot of this story just seems to be thrown together all willingly with no real thought put into it because characters and character backstories that shouldn't exist in the continuity are used for nothing more than woe moments and that is what happening in this comic book also. Hero being called Toy Man, Ackerman's Harpoon Hand, Final Crisis, which has always been something hinted at but doesn't make much sense in this continuity. The Will Payton version of Sturman appearing here, Hal Jordan's ring working around the nth metal which seemed to be a problem in the casting and the Daniel Hall version of Dream showing up. Now if DC came out and said that all of the old continuity was back before the story began then more of this would make sense but since they have not 
this comes off as a problem for me because there are no rules and nothing, including the situation of the Justice League being together make this puzzle look like all of the pieces were in the box before the creatures began this endeavor. Still I think the bigger picture while not showing all of its pieces is something that seems cool and I look forward to seeing where it goes coming down the line. As for the Earth, well I love Greg Capullo's Earth but I don't know if he's just been off of these characters too long or if he was rushed because while some of the book looks great, there are sections of this that it's hard to figure out what the hell is exactly going on. All in all, there are problems I have with this issue but there was enough going on with it that I can look past some of that with the hope that they will explain in future issues allowing me to keep on optimistic mind going forward with this series. So that's the main agenda and main series storyline about this comic book and that is the everything what you can see in the Dark Knights the metal issue number one so I hope I could have done better but uh, right now I have not read the issue fully concentrated because I have read it overall kind of bits and pieces because when this storyline is not making sense I just lost the interest but uh, it may seem interesting for those kind of guys who really like to read new kind of creative storyline they will like it but uh, for me when I just like that uh, the superheroes uh, however they they is there and their reality I like them however they was uh, so that's why it is too tough to accept this kind of storyline uh, while reading a continuity so yeah w let's check out what others are saying about this one so I'm gonna check out from we science no I have already checked out with them so I'm gonna check out from adventuresinportis.com and in David Brooke he has written a good things about this one and he has written bad things about this one also not the bad things criticizes yeah couple of draws a wickedly good issue the detail is insane and every panel looks like a ton of time was put into them seriously how does this cat have the time to draw this stuff there are cool ideas throughout and imaginative and clever uses of the page to make it pop in one page for example capolo frames each hero within a metal bar that is wrapped in rights and that is what happening so it works perfectly for the scene as they are all inside metal robots and it looks cool too. There isn't a page that looks half-assed or done without care. You can also see time and energy spent via colors by FCO Platis Placenaya and inks by Jonathan Glapion. There's a brightness this unmistakable that gives it a superhero charm. So yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed this review and explained. So Dark Knights the Metal issue number one has just started and Let's wait for issue number two to be more good and better. So have a great day guys and adios amigos.